Hello everyone. Today is going to be a bit of a longer episode because we're going to be covering logic and there's a lot to logic. So if you don't already, make sure to grab a glass of water just so you stay hydrated during this. Alright, so first thing to logic that we have to go over is how do you even make logical power? So if you look at uh, logic over here, just all the way down at the bottom of your tier 1, you'll see that all these have these things right here. And it's kilo mf. KMF. So that's a lower voltage than you would see on like, for example, any other machine. You see, like this is 250, right? And you also see that they are, that they have a, um, you also see that the inputs are these weird, weird little, you see that they're like circuit boards. So to connect these, you need logical power. And to get logical power, you have to use resistors. So what you do is you grab whatever power you have. Uh, it takes normal power. So uh, like regular poles, you connect this to here. Then you'll see once it's connected, it'll start outputting logical power. So once it's outputting logic power, then we can start doing some fun things with our logic. So I'm going to do this tutorial, assuming you know the basic type of logic gates. So what a OR gate, an AND gate is, a NOT gate, a ZOR, a NAND, and a NOR. I'm going to assume you know what those are, because that's a very, very this this tutorial would go on for a very long time if I had if I explained all those. So if you don't know what they are, uh, make sure to look up because there are really good tutorials and just explanation videos on all of these different types of gates. So if you don't understand, then definitely go ahead and do it. So first, what I'm going to show is a logic knot. So logic knots are kind of like. They're basically just the pole version. They're just a um. They're just the uh the power transfer poles. So if you were to have. If you were to have like the LV pole, it's basically just that version, but for logic. It allows you to bring logic to greater distances. Let's see if I put it here. Just like that, you see it goes there. Now logic switch in case you don't understand what a uh, a switch is you insert power here you can see this power going through it and this power coming out if i were to grab if i were to grab i'm pretty sure it's over here mm -hmm. can it connect to that ah it can't sad but if I were to press this button, actually, let me let me replace this real quick so it doesn't fill up with power. If I turn this off, as you see, it says closed, and then I connect this thing here, you'll see it would output nothing because it's a switch. It's like a light switch. It's exactly like a light switch. If you want power to go through it, all you have to do is just open it. You can see power goes through it. Next is a button, similar to the switch, but instead of it working, instead of it being a switch, you have to hold the button on for it to transfer power. And you can't hold it down. You have to press it once, and it'll send one pulse down. Now, I guess the next thing would be uh, the LEDs. So LEDs, you can have color, RGB, and white LEDs. So white LEDs are the simplest. They just do that. So you can see if I press the button once, it turns on. Like that. You can see it, it just goes, goes white. RGB LED are a lot more complicated. 
So you have inputs for blue, uh, you have inputs for red and green, RGB. So if we wanted this, we could connect to, let's say, this one, this one, and this one, and it'll become white, because that's how RGB works. If you're not familiar with RGB, that's, a, again, this kind of like the logic gates. It's a different subject. Uh, we have logic pulses. So, if you ever played Minecraft, you'll know that... Uh, if you ever played with Minecraft and repeaters, specifically, it's like that. It gives out a pulse as long as it's powered. So if I hook this up directly to here, just so we see it, you can see it will give out a pulse. Let me wait. Actually, I don't think it's enough power. Yeah, it might, it might be getting rid of the power, actually. I think I think what's happening here is that... Let's, let's see right here. Six, two, if we add, and then a delay is also like a repeater, but it essentially gives a delay. So in this case, if we turn it off, turn it on, you see there's a very tiny bit of delay here. You see it's almost immediate with this. If I disconnect it, it takes some time. You can see that. So you can add delays. You can change how many ticks. If I want 100 ticks, or the max is 60 apparently, it'll wait 60 ticks. I'm not quite sure how long that is. It might be 10 seconds. I don't know how many ticks are in a second in Industrialist. Ah, there we go. Next, we have Logic Pool. Basically, this, basically the knot, it just transfers it via the logic pool. Next, we have our time gate. So the way a time gate works is it's sort of like a not gate or an or gate. Or, nah, not gate. Depend, depends what you do. So as you can see, there's different times in industrialist. You have night, day, morning, etc. So if we do from 0 to 24, you'll see it's going to output everything. So if you wanted, for example, if we go here, some of you may already know this. You may have already seen this. Where is it? Actually, it might be in here. Hmm, let's just find it. Spotlight. Is it in here? Ah, there it is. Huge spotlight. So huge spotlight is logical powered. So if you put this here, you'll see it turns on. Let's say we want it from 5 to 2 p.m. You'll see it turns off because it's not 5 o'clock. We'll leave that there so we can see it turn on once it reaches 5 o'clock. Next, we have... At the bottom, let me just undo that real quick. Logic Sophie here now. Wow. We have our logic clock. So a way a logic clock is that it... Ah, there's six, six ticks in one second. Okay. So a logic clock, the way it works is that it waits to... Let, like, let's say we wait six ticks. So that's one second. And then we output, let's say, a... A six, so a second's worth. So a way that would work is if we grab a uh, white LED. You just bring that there. You just have to wait, as you see. That every one second, we can actually just increase this real quick. So you see. That's going to give us 10 seconds worth. Just like that. Next we have logic breakers. So logic breakers are 
very, very useful if you're trying to control the flow of your, um, of your machinery. So let's say, for example, uh, a scrubber. What you would do is you would take, you would take the outputs of a pollution meter. You put it in here. Let's see. We could put our maximum as 50. So if our maximum is 50, minimum is negative 10. Is it getting any? It is. And wait, hold on. If we say 0, 0. Pollution should be at zero. I'm actually, I'm actually, it might not be at zero, so I, I have no clue what the uh, thing is. But the way it works is that if power is passed into here, like that, you'll see what happens is that it closes this breaker. So why this is useful is because since this power, since regular power and logical power aren't the same wire type, it makes it difficult for you to control machinery uh, using logic. So what this does is it allows you to connect your uh, regular power to here, connect your logical power to here, so whenever this gets a logical power from whatever your uh, logic system is, it will close and then it will output right here. Get rid of it. Obviously it's, it's not gonna show because we're not draining the power here, but Actually, I can show that if I just quickly find. You'll see. No longer. Doesn't work anymore. You see that. Next, we have our... I'm not going in partic any particular order, just what I think is important. We have our valves. So valves, again, they're also very useful for controlling your... As you can see, it just became 5 o'clock, so our thing turned off. Nice. I'm going to actually change this from, we're going to say, we're going to say mm, 18 to 7. So these things, the way they work is that it's like a normal pipe. You input it, you output it. Actually. A better example would be, it's like a valve. So the way valves work, the way valves work is you input fluid, then you output fluid depending on this. All right, this is a control, sorry, a valve control. We're looking for the regular valve. They actually might be, might be in here. Let me search for valve. Valve. I know there's definitely one. Can't quite remember where it is. But what it does is that it's like it's like the lever. It's like the lever actually over here. So oh I delete the lever. It's like the lever. When it's when you when it's open, it allows items or fluid through. When it's closed, it doesn't allow them in. So the way this works is that if you connect power to here, if we connect power to here, it will open it. You can hear it make a little buzz sound. It'll open it and it will allow fluid or liquid to go through. Just like that. Next, we have our... Logic memory, logic memory. Again, this this requires some uh, this requires some prior knowledge of just how computers work in general. But the way this works is that you give it a power supply, as it says. Give it the power supply right there. You input a signal right here, and then it'll continue to output it. However. If you want to end, and then if you get rid of this, it will keep outputting it. It will keep outputting it. 
just like that. However, if we get a button, like let's say right here. Oh, I actually forgot. You can. Uh, no, I didn't forget. So with the button, if you connect this to here, you'll see it resets. Now, if we give it some power again, right here. Give power back here. Remove it. You'll see it's going to remember, and it's going to stay powered on because you can see here we have power going from here into here. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep outputting the signal. However, since we have power connected to here, or it's not connected, it's connected, but it's not outputting. The second we put power into our reset, it turns off because we're resetting the memory. It doesn't remember anything. Now we have our seven segment display. So this works off of bits, as you see here. So the way it works is that you input So depending on how much depending on how much electricity you enter and where you enter it will determine where your uh, will determine what your number is. So if we were to get let's say a few where is it? Whoops. We want our logic here. Where is the logic? Where is our I'm trying to find it? Ah. No. Where's the switch? I could have sworn. I might be blind. I might be blind. There it is. Okay, found it. Oof. So we give us four of these. Instead, give each of these one. Just turn all these off. You can see it shows zero right now. It's showing zero because there's no power. If I give it one power in bit one, we get a one. If I give it in here, we get a three because it this is uh it goes based off of kind of like binary. So if we remove this one now, we get a two. Now we have a three. Turn this one on. We'll get a seven because we add four to that. But if we remove these two, you see we get four. Add one, we get five. If we add this, we get six. It's it's a bit confusing if you don't understand how um, how bits work and binary. Uh, and I honestly don't think I'm that good at teaching it, so I'm not going to attempt to teach it. Because I don't want to confuse you. It's something you have to experiment with yourself to sort of figure out, or you can try watching a video. There's no problem with that. You can always watch a video. Again, there's many helpful ones. Next, we have our adder. Our outer, or sorry, our adder is exactly what it sounds like. You add, you add two together, and you could use this with our. Where is it? Where is it? I just had it. Segment display. Some outputs if only one input is powered. see it adds everything together two it's an adder it does what it says it adds so if you put power in bit one Put power in bit two. Now you can't you can't add too many high numbers. I 
think this is a max of uh, three you can max of three it is, if I'm correct. Outputs of both inputs are powered, yep. And some outputs of only one input powered. So it just adds two values together, sort of like a comparator in Minecraft. Next we have our dabble. So dabbling, dabbling is an interesting, an interesting uh, thing in logic. Again, I'm not really equipped to explain this, unfortunately. You should probably play around with some of these. Only, only the really nerdy people will even bother using things like the adder or the or the dabble or actually a lot of logic but I, th I think logic in most cases people either ignore or they use it for lights or they use it for scrubbers now I know I just did a uh, video on pollution and I, I know I made a mistake with logic so I'm just gonna quickly fix that mistake right here so the way this pollution meter works is that the minimum value is well that the minimum value of what your pollution has to be so if you put negative 40 and you turn it on it's going to make sure it never goes below negative 40 so you're not going to get to negative 50 negative 60 you're always going to be negative 40 and above, above now if you make the minimum negative 50 it changes that so it never goes below negative 50. If you want here negative 40, that way, if we connect this to here, it will output because our pollution is not between these two. So if we go ahead and grab, if our, if our pollution is between these two values here, then it will not output any signal. Now this is where our logic breaker comes in. Logic breaker, if we come in here, if we put this here, connect the output to there, then we connect this to there. If we grab ourselves a scrubber, scrubber, You'll see it's outputting here, just like that. Now, if I put this, let's say we want the minimum value to be negative five, maximum could be five, it's no longer gonna output anything, or at least it's gonna try not to. Actually, wait, uh, minimum value is here, maximum value is here, And if I do this, if I turn both these off, I'm still pretty sure. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's showing that because it's not using, it's not using the power right now. That's why. That's why. If I were to give something like a... Where are you? There you are. Like that. As you can see, it, ha it has to wait for the power to exit all of here before it uh, changes. I think that was what's happening before. I'm pretty sure that's what was happening before where we're in. I was getting confused. That's why you have to wait for all the power over here to be done. Now, if we were to turn this off, or actually, we, if we were to go back to negative 50 and negative 40, because that puts us outside of our range, you'll see it go back down. Just like that. So that's it for the basic logic. Now there is complicated logic, which is this thing. Oh boy. This thing is really... I would say it's really complicated. It is definitely complicated. Semiconductors, gold wire, logic plates. Mm -hmm. Now this is how you make microchips. So, 
I'm I haven't done much experimenting with this so I honestly cannot tell you how this works you could try figuring out yourself or using the wiki because I'm not gonna be much of a help here I will be investigating this doohickey and then trying to make a video on it once I figure out how it works but until then I guess that's just for all of you to experiment with I think that's I think that's everything I, think I covered everything I don't think I did a great job explaining things today so if you have any questions just ask in the comments below or even in the subreddit or in my discord server either or even the server uh, the industrialist discord server all the links will be down below in the description ask me in the comments I'll respond the best I can anyways I hope for those of you who were here, at least for the uh, tutorial, you learned something specifically about logic. I don't know how you learn anything else, but if you did, that's cool. Hope you all enjoy your day. Bye.